Thank you for downloading this episode of Escape Pod. On this episode, we interviewed Katja Gleason, singer-songwriter from Australia. You're going to enjoy this episode, episode 18 of Escape Pod. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash outbreak. With over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Support this podcast by signing up today. Again, that's audibletrial.com backslash outbreak. I have 60 seconds. Best recorders, high speed. Check all batteries. Minus 50. Armed. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Your goal for ABU 4, shut down on 3, time. 2, 1, lift off. No it's throttle up. Good day, throttle up. Still on its way to orbit after a uh, successful uh, ascent up through main engine cutoff. Houston, 20 seconds to LOS T dress. Nice to be in orbit. This is Escape Pod, part of the Outbreak Microbroadcasting Network, available at OutbreakPodcast.com. Thank you for downloading this episode of Escape Pod. I'm your host, David Anthony. Uh, what's my name? <laughs> oh, Tony Brown. Tony yeah, Brown. I forgot I'm Tony Brown again. Co-hosting Tony Brown. The voice has left me. Has it? Well, for now. You've been busy, buddy. Yeah, I have been a little busy. What? Uh, first of all, what are you drinking? I'm drinking Victory's Hop Devil. Hop Devil. Is it good? It's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. Hey, uh, let's give some of our uh, fans a uh, heads up, too. You got some good news today. Uh, oh, I did get good news. I went to the doctor. Yep. And I'm not pregnant. Thank God. Yeah. Oh, well, that, well, I mean, really, I'm not pregnant, so that really wasn't a <laughs> lie, but... Um, <laughs> I went to Alrighty the doctor then. and I have kicked diabetes ass. Amen. I have to take no diabetic related medicine now. That's awesome. So then they were worried about my A1Cs being a little too good. They were 4.9. Wow. So she was like, we can just take you off all your medicine. Come see me again in three months. Kicking ass down to 180 pounds. So... Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Super I'm so happy for you. I'm proud of you, buddy. No more fucking prescription drugs. That's Except for the fantastic. ones that keep me from being crazier than I already am. Well, I don't know. Might have to stay really on gonna, that one a little longer. Really going to help any. I've <laughs> <sighs> known you for a while now, Tony. So, yeah, no, super good news. Yeah, it is good news. And it too bad good. they can't see me dance right now because they would love it. Wow. Well, I could shoot some video and put it up online. That's right. But then I'd probably scare like the, the children. Like Charleston Hustle I'm attempting right here? Uh, you more, look like more like the <laughs> gopher from Caddyshack. That's oh yeah, that uh, okay, pretty close. <laughs> Except the you know gopher's not as handsome as you. Ah, oh. oh, there we go. All right, uh, Tony, what do you what were you up to? Uh, we both did some different things this. Uh, yeah, that was this a little week. weird. Yeah, we were but... both in different directions, and it was kind of weird not working on something together. <clears throat> but that's all right. You you were getting some things ready for a big weekend we got coming yeah, up. Yeah, we got the OMG Con, their 10th anniversary of the OMG Con, OMG Con coming up this weekend. So that's that's going to be awesome. Working on some of that stuff and then a few other issues that kept me from making the trek down the stairs into the the fallout shelter. That's all right. That's Mainly all right. because I don't think I would have fit down the stairs because I transformed into Tony Saurus Rex. Really? Yeah, so I'd, I'd, the stairs would have probably gave way, and it would have just been a big mess. I'm glad you got your shit together, buddy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, guess what I did while you what were you doing did? that? I did an awesome interview. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of bummed that I oh. couldn't get in on that one. And I was bummed that you weren't here, too, because uh, she was just yeah. the sweetest, sweetest girl. And an awesome, awesome talent. Heck, yeah. And it's uh, Katja Gleason, who's our podcast for today. Oh, that's awesome. That's right. That's right. So I recorded it for you so you wouldn't miss any of it. Yeah. So uh, I saw, I saw though, on Periscope, because mm-hmm. she was totally Periscoping while you were doing an interview, and that was awesome. That was so cool. <laughs> so that all of so her cool. followers were checking it out. That was very cool. And uh, and it's going to go up live tonight, so we'll let her know that as soon as, as, soon as this is uh, done. We'll, we'll mash this all together and play it. But uh, I'm going to play the interview for you, and uh, we'll get this get this going. And, um, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited next week's OMG con. It's going to be probably two or three <laughs> podcasts out of that one 
event, event alone. And then, of course, real excited uh, for this one because uh, um, if you guys like uh, pop music, um, you know, top forty sound STO type music, man, you're gonna you're gonna love her. She is awesome, amazing, and uh, has a good message for everybody. Definitely, definitely enjoy this interview on Escape Pod. Welcome out to Escape Pod. I'm David Anthony, and today via Skype we have Katja Gleason. Is that right? Yes, it's perfect. <laughs> good. How good. Are you? Singer songwriter from Australia, right? That's correct. I am true right. blue. And right now you're in um, uh, Los Angeles. Is that right? I am. Yeah, I'm in Hollywood. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's cliche. It's cliche. <laughs> well, they say if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? Yeah, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> awesome. Well, I tell you, um, in case people don't know, um, I was was on. Um, I guess downloaded, um, heard about this new app, uh, that's the, uh, Periscope app that's yep. available from Twitter. And, uh, of course I signed up for it and, you know, didn't have anybody else that had the, that had the app. So I was like, Hmm, I'm going to check this out. And they have like a top list of all these, you know, people that are starting to do it already with big followers. And you were way up on the top, like in the top five. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So that's why I clicked on that, added you. And then I've seen a couple of your um, dance rehearsals when you talk to the fans. Yeah. And it's great. And I just uh, thought you were great, outgoing uh, personality and very talented. And I thought, let's bring you on our podcast and let more people know about you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm honored that you asked. Yeah, I remember when you were sort of talking to me. I think, weren't we at the pool or something? I think so. Yep. yep. Yes. See, we go way back. Um, <laughs> I was, I was very excited. So, thank you so much for getting in touch. And yeah, no, it's it's great to meet you over the internet. Well, it is a <laughs> pleasure to meet you too. Ah, oh, thank you. All right. So, um, obviously, you're a singer. So let's uh, let's go back to I guess in Australia, where do you where's your passion came from uh, from singing? Um, if we if we go all the way back to the dawn of time, um. <laughs> I sort of I started sort of singing more to myself um, because I was um, bullied a lot when I was young, so I didn't really have any friends. Um, so music was music was uh, was kind of um, I don't know. It, it was healing. It sort of became my only friend when I was younger, um, mm -hmm. and I was a, a bit too shy to sing in front of anyone else, but. Um, but over time, I sort of got the courage to um, to sing in front of people and realized that I could I could use that to help other people as well because music helped me feel better about myself. So, um, yeah, so that that's kind of the real roots of it. It's okay. uh, what got you started then was just kind of a self preservation almost, right? Yeah, it was kind of um, yeah, it was it was a a, a really sort of personal experience. Um, and I sort of realized that it, it was, it's almost selfish of me to sort of keep music to myself. And, and the more that I've sort of shared it with other people, um, the more I've been able to connect with others. And they, they sort of, a lot of people have gone through the same thing uh, that I have. So yeah, I've just found it's, it's like a universal language. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you definitely, um, you have a documentary that's available. I do. Yes. And, um, I, um, I watched it and was really blown away by your honesty and your openness to talk about this oh. subject. Cause it's hard for a lot of people to, to deal with, to come to terms with this. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and it's, it's hard cause I mean, when I talk about that sort of bullying, it was, it was physical and it was, um, it was also verbal. So, but there's also, you know, there's also internet bullying. That's really crazy at the moment. Oh yeah. Um, and and that's just never ending, but uh, yeah, it's it's a whole other beast when it's it's a person that's doing it to you know to you physically. <laughs> right, and and how old were you when this started? Um, oh, I was in, I was in elementary school, so okay. I think yeah, it sort of started when I was like six. Wow. Yeah, because um, because I grew up a, a bit overweight, and I sort of um, I was very shy. Um, and I, I sort of became a victim of it because, um, 
yeah, I, I think that people like to pick their targets um, and I seem to be a, a very easy target, especially when, you know, kids sort of see that someone's a little bit more overweight than others and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I never kind of fought back or anything like that. So I, I was sort of seemed like an easier target at the time. So what was the turning point for you to where, I mean, at some point you seemed like you, I don't know, got a backbone or just had enough? Yeah. Um, well, I, I sort of, I started to lose the weight at the start of high school and I noticed it didn't stop bullying. It kind of just the things that they teased me for were different. So instead of, you know, being a, a fat whatever, I was a slut or a whore or uh, you know, or a porn star or something like it right. just, it, it wasn't, I realized it wasn't my weight. That was the reason why I was being targeted. It was just, I was allowing myself to, to continuously, um, be targeted and, and I let myself be affected by it. Um, and as soon as I started noticing, um, what, what the bullies life was, I kind of put myself in their position and sort of, tried to sort of see the world through their eyes and um, I know that some of them went through really hard times at home with their parents being too hard on them or they had siblings that bullied them so they were just kind of using me as a scapegoat. So once I sort of started to understand what the bully was going through, I realized it wasn't even about me. It was right. it was about them. So I think that knowing that truth is um, the biggest turning point. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's um, because I mean, bullying is wrong no matter what. Of course, <laughs> and, of course. And no one should, one should ever. There is just, no there's no excuse. Exactly, exactly. No. no, no excuse for it. But that you were able to at least step back and and uh, and say there's a there's a, there's a reason for this because you I know, yeah you hadn't done anything you hadn't picked on them or pushed them no. down or no. you know, stolen somebody's <laughs> boyfriend or you know it's just. Um, it is a shame, but and that yeah, people have to go through it, and some people don't survive it. Yeah, that's the, that's the scariest thing mm-hmm. uh, is is when I think it's when people sort of see it as there's no end to it, um, there's no way out of it. Yeah, that they're sort of stuck being bullied, um, and definitely if if something physical is going on, then um, people need to speak to a teacher or a parent or a, or an adult that they trust or someone else because. Um, you know that that sort of stuff. It, it's it's illegal. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, so, um, yeah, it's um, it's just a shame that it happens, and um, just hopefully that other people that sort of speak out about their experiences, they know that they're not alone um, in going through those experiences. Well, I, I, then, I commend you for what you've done, and and uh, and you know, because some people just put it to the beside them and move on. I mean, you're a beautiful young woman who's got an amazing career in front of her and you don't have to mention any of this, you know, some people keep that in the closet or behind them, but, but you yeah. bring it to the forefront. I think that's great. And you should be commended for that. Absolutely. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a part of who I am. It's a part of my history and, um, yeah, it's just the, the more people that speak out about their experiences, the less, you know, some, it might stop someone from hurting themselves. Um, you know, Maybe even affect the bully so they realize what they're doing. So yeah, they stop. exactly. Yeah. You, you never know. Um, and, and to know that when someone's being bullied that, that I can notice that some that the bully is actually going through pain um, and, and rather than blaming a bully and, and putting hate back into the world, it's, it's more compassion and empathy. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that that's important as well. It's important that people don't demonize bullies and, and put, yeah, give back the negative energy that they've been given. Cause that, that just that can make it worse. That's a deathly cycle. Yeah, yeah. It's a terrible cycle. And I, and I know the feeling of, um, you know, wanting someone to get what they deserve or mm-hmm. something like that. But it, if you take a moment just to, um, really connect in, you, you know, that, that, Yeah. Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast was because your outlook is frankly amazing. And I think it's oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh and on uh and on that note too, your documentary that you did, um, I watched it uh all the way through and it's oh. um 
it's really, I mean, you open up and you, you know, you show <laughs> pictures when you're young and you explain a lot of detail. Now, and you also do, you've done some lectures, is that right? Or some speaking? Yeah, I've, I've been a part of a few um, anti-bullying campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gone to a, a lot of schools, um, like a lot of high schools around um, L- LA particularly, um, talking about anti-bullying um, and my personal experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love doing that. And I also have a song that's called Shooting Star and it's an anti-bullying song. Um, and um, I, I think it, I, I sang it at um, LA Pride last year because mm-hmm. um, I know that a lot of people um, of the LGBT community are victims of bullying and they have been ever since their, their children as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm a huge supporter of the LGBT community too. That's fantastic. So I, do, I do a lot of a lot of Pride shows and I love it. It's That's a great fantastic. Thing. Yeah. Now, uh, I also want to let everybody know that we are going to put uh, – links to um your documentary and to uh, a bunch of your videos and, and a lot of your social media because <laughs> you are all over social media which is great yes i we'll love it. those links on our on our show notes as well so everybody can easily get there from from our website our, our listeners and um <clears throat> and we look forward to that but um but moving on from from that um you've um like i said you you're singing your your voice um, when did you start um, thinking? Wow, I want to I want to do this as a career. Uh, definitely, um, it, it was sort of at the end of elementary school, but definitely at the start of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was at an, an audition, and um, a, a musical theater company was uh, was out and about, and they sort of scouted me in a subway restaurant, um, <laughs> and I started doing um, children's theater. Um, wow. and it's, they're kind of like rock concert musicals that go to elementary schools and, um, they, they bring up a, a positive message in every single show. So like the little mermaid is all about truth and telling the truth and, um, being afraid of, um, your, your parents fear, like you're being fearful of your parents' anger. And that may be why you don't want to tell your parents the truth, right. um, and, and all that sort of stuff. So I, I loved doing that and I got to tour, so I've had a lot of touring experience and live experience, um, and I started writing and recording my own music while I was on tour. And yeah, just definite. I was. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. That's great. A lot of people they, they look for a long time to try and figure out what their niche is, but I think you found yours. <laughs> that's uh, for sure. I love. I mean, yeah. I also love cooking, though. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> <laughs> now you and you dance a lot too. I do. I love dancing. Um, I get, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to have a, a, that what you saw is kind of like a a fitness studio at my building. So Mm -hmm. we kind of use it as a dance studio as well. So that's kind of where we rehearse up our shows for the live shows, um, that I do here. And I've got one coming up on Saturday. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Where's that going to be at? Um, it's at Avalon. It's for, um, Star Belshi. It's a, it's, it's a charity for the Ryan Seacrest Foundation. Um, and there's going to be a whole lot of, uh, social media people. And there's so many performers. There's like phase five. He's an awesome boy band Mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing our set as well. So yeah, it's always good to get out and do shows. That's fantastic. That, that is great. And good, hopefully exposure for you. And, uh, one of these record company guys are going to pick you up pretty soon. I'm sure. Oh, who knows? They should. It's all part of it's all part of the journey. It is. <laughs> it is. Well, I'll tell you, you've put together uh, some really good uh, videos uh, that are available too. Uh, I know you have a brand new one that you uh, yeah. that you're pushing, right? Yeah, it's called "Look at Us," um, and that that song quite, kind of came. It came out. Um, it, it's 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 out at the moment in um, Italy. And Switzerland on the radio, so yes. it's it's kind of making its way around Europe because I'm still independent, so um, I'm just kind of working it slowly and and growing it um, any way that I can. Um, and yeah, that that song is kind of about coming out of bullying and really starting to accept yourself and going, just going for what you want to want to do in life. Um, and it's yeah, it's just it's just about forgetting haters and getting together with your friends and having a good time and celebrating growing yourself as a person. Well, yeah. I've, uh, I've been in uh, radio for years and, uh, and then now in doing a podcast. Um, but, uh, but I tell you, uh, it's very catchy. <laughs> it's yeah. very pop and it's, uh, I think it's going to do very well. 
Uh, uh, we listened you. to it several times. My daughter, who's uh, 14, listened to it, and she loved it. So, so oh, she's good. got it, she's added to her rotation of songs oh, she listens to. Good. So I know someone sent me a, a video of their daughter. Um, that I think they're watching the music video on the TV, and their daughter was dancing, and I loved it. Like it's just it's moments like that that sort of yeah make everything worth it. Cause well, that's great. Well, I think you've got a hit on your hands, and I'm sure there's oh, got to be a lot more in your head that you're ready to explode you. to get out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, all all the tracks that I do in my live show, they're all new and unreleased, and um, that yeah, we've just sort of we've just made them. So I'm making sure that there's all dance routines and there's a whole live show um, to it all. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. That's Hopefully awesome. people like it. <laughs> well, I, I, like I said, I, I think they will. I, I have no doubt that you're going to succeed. Um, like I said, it's a uh, amazing and, and your personality and, and your outlook that really uh, that really shines and it really does. And and it's so much more important um, for that than 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 a lot of people you know think. You know, there's there's yeah. good people out there and there's people out there that are just business. And you are about your fans and communicating, and I think it's great. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, you're you, sir. Welcome. You're welcome. Now, you um, you were on this um, another video that uh, went viral. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about that? I'm sorry to your daughter because <laughs> ah. I know that last line's naughty. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a rap battle. It was Snow White versus Elsa um, by Whitney Avalon. And um, she's the one that plays Snow White, and it's uh, it's her series on um, on YouTube. And it, yeah, it was it was great fun. Um, it yeah, it it was fun being a, a badass queen. Exactly, well, <laughs> nothing to be ashamed of. It was it was. Oh great. no, not at all. I just know a lot of kids have seen it, and there's the there's the naughty word at That's, the end. Yeah, you know, but it does, it does say explicit, and it is within context. So yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, and uh, and I mean. And when you see you in the costume dressed up, um, it's like the I swear it's like the cartoon come to life. Hey, so cool! There you go. There you go. So Disney, um, you're hey. welcome. <laughs> they they should they should hire you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. There you go. There you go. But seriously, you do a great job, and it's uh, it's, it's very funny. It's not very long. It's like two and a half minutes. Yeah, it's only a couple of minutes, and it's just it's a really good. Um, like I know that it's it's funny and it's lighthearted and it's princesses that we all know, but it was just really good to explore um, how women were perceived back when Snow White existed mm -hmm. and how women are perceived now. And you know, Disney princesses are always role models to young mm -hmm. girls. Yep. Um, so it's it's just interesting to to talk about the differences between it and and even though it's you know they're kind of giving each other a you know a bit of. A bit of flack. <laughs> um, yeah. It's yeah, the this the heart is still behind it, and and it does spark a really good debate. Um, and it's great to see how far people have come, and and um, what what's expected of women, and how women are expected to act. And yeah, I love it. Breaking it's, down those barriers, and I like it. Yeah, and it's funny. It is funny. Uh -huh. It is very funny. It's pretty funny too. So yeah, it's good no, that you I, have a I, sense I, of humor. Yeah, I absolutely loved it, and it was uh, um, it was cool being able to explore my rapping side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see. Now you had an, uh, another video that you released that, that had a lot of rap in it. Is that right? Yeah, uh, "Look at Us" has a rap verse, um, and there's a song that I wrote called "Hot Mess." Hot Mess, that's um, it. Yeah, that, that's 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 my ratchet song. Um, that that's kind of my take on Hollywood because when I first came here, I was really blown away at. Um, the industry and, and, you know, met, met a few seedy people. Cause you know, you come here wide eyed and you think everything's great and amazing. And then you, you do meet individuals that, you know, you hear about that are shady and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way they treated women and, and how they expected young girls to act in the industry. It was, yeah, it was kind of very overwhelming. So I, I had to kind of vent it in a, in a song where I was sort of sarcastically taking the piss out of it all and being like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, so exactly. yeah, that, that was good fun. Um, and I was invited somewhere in Vegas, um, to a club for someone's birthday, but I was underage. Um, and you know, they didn't let me in, even though they knew how old I was, they still invited me. So I was like, well, while we're here, let's shoot a video. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> gotta make the best of it. <laughs> well, I, the, the video was really good too, and funny. It's got oh, some pretty you. funny parts in it. And uh, I got to learn how to drive a bulldozer and an excavator. Come I, on. Saw, I saw that. You were working us pretty good. So you got great. a backup career ready to go. Yeah, no, they um <laughs> they have that at at Vegas. It's called Dig This, and it's just off the main strip. Mm -hmm. Um, it's owned by this awesome guy from New Zealand, and yeah, it's just a completely different experience other than gambling and eating and stuff. So I was like, hey, yes, there let's you get go. that. Let's get dirty, play in the dirt. Yeah, let's play in the dirt. It's hot. <laughs> Let's let's learn how to be construction workers. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> so what? Um, I, mean, I know you've you've uh, you've actually received some awards for some of the things that you've done as well, too. Yeah, um, I um, I sort of I've created a um, it's kind of a music video slash short film series, and mm -hmm. it ended up going for about an hour. It's called Timinium City, um, and it was kind of it's kind of Sin City meets Gotham City. Cool, but. It, pop star version, yeah. It was it was just this kind of creative thing that I I made and we shopped it around to a whole lot of um, festivals and and won a few film festival awards. Um, so that was yeah, that was pretty cool. That's so like fantastic international shorts festival and the Las Vegas Film Festival and um, yeah, that was that was really cool. It's it's good to sort of do something out of the box and creative and and have people enjoy it. Um, and then I've won a couple of um, Beat 100 awards for my um, my music videos and songs, and they're a, a really cool website that really supports a lot of independent artists. And mm -hmm. you can do a cover or you can do an original, and they'll put it up on their site and they make it available for people to watch and listen. And yeah, Beat 100 is a really really great platform. And you've you've done a, a few covers that are up there as well, videos which are absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you. Really yeah, like your version yeah, of a lot Periscope, of songs. Um, a lot of people kind of do some requests, so I just, um, yeah, I learn them and, and share them with people, and there's a couple that I decided, oh, I'll just record them and make it available. It's kind of a gift that I give to um, the people that, like my street team, they're called uh, special agents. And, nice. yeah, they because they're, they're, you know how there's like people have their, I don't know, Cartier's kittens or yeah, yeah I could I could never come up with a name like that they're like what are, what do you name your fans and I'm like but they're not I don't know it just makes me uncomfortable to say that I feel like we're all one and we're all a big group of people that just want to make the world a better place with our own special talents and gifts exactly. um, and they really support me so the best way I, I try to give back is to give them some songs so I just record them and you know, send them the links and let them download it if they like it. Well, <laughs> if they like it. Oh, whatever. I don't think you have any problem with that. Um, very, very, like I said, the ones I've seen, I really liked a lot. And I think you oh, did a great job on them. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, and going back to uh, to Periscope, like where I first, uh, first discovered you myself. Where we, where we first met, yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> I knew um, you were, we were talking earlier about, about the bullying and... And obviously you're a beautiful young woman, but man, uh, and, and it's good that you can actually mute them and kick them off. But boy, some of those yeah. people on, I mean, some, most of the people are just absolutely nice and sweet to you and, you know, and, oh, and, yeah. and but there's a few that are just weirdos, perverts, whatever you want to call them. But, oh my God. That so was, some of the things they were saying was like, how do you put up with that? No, but there's some that like, uh, obviously autocorrect um, gets a lot of people and, and they're trying to get, a, you know, a dirty comment out really fast and they're obviously behind their computer and they're laughing at them, you know, that mm -hmm. makes someone uncomfortable and then they give me a really good laugh because, you know, the autocorrect monster got them and they just look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> go. Um, yeah, I just, I don't like to feed the monster. Um, unless, unless I'm having a really good laugh about it. But yeah, I just, I can understand, like, as I said, I kind of put myself in other people's position. They could be just people in a group and they're like, let's say the dumbest thing possible and laugh about it. And I'm like, ah, I'm just going to block you. Cause <laughs> I don't know. Cause you can. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, great. Foot, the foot fetish ones. Oh God. That was your feet. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of weird. They're, I'm sure that if they put up a Craigslist ad, they would find what they're looking for. But unfortunately, you're not going to find it on my Periscope yeah, not, channel. Not, not going to find it with you. Oh, that's so funny. No. That's so funny. And I noticed too that um, uh, two or three times, 
uh, one of the big questions that, that came up was, uh, are you dating anybody? Are you seeing <laughs> anybody? You, I mean, you seem to get that a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I get like people ask on Periscope, but it's, it's weird. Like no one asks me in real life. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't know why there's, I think, I think it's just something that people like to ask people all the time. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not dating anyone. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going on a date with Periscope puppet though. Oh, there you go. There it's, you go. It's a puppet of the Periscope like logo. <laughs> there you it's go. a hilarious channel and, and I can't wait to go on a date with him. I hear though he's playing the field. He's, he's been out on a, on a couple of dates. <laughs> so know that going in, you should be safe. Right? I will. I will. <laughs> Look, let's, maybe I'm in it for the meal. You know, any excuse. Well, there kidding. you go. There you go. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm excited. And, and we'll definitely periscope that. So we'll have a periscope date. That's cool. That's very cool. <laughs> very cool. And, I, and like I said, it's, it's great how you communicate with your fans. Um, and you are on a lot of different social media. You want to yeah, go over that with yeah. me real quick so tell um, people on, what they are? Everything. I try to make it as easy as possible. So um, obviously the hardest thing to do is just spell my name in the first <laughs> place. But once you get over that learning curve, you're set because everything is just Carty Gleason. So it's um, Twitter. We do Vines. Like I just put up a new Vine today. Um, and me and some friends, like we just do comedy, like comedy skits and stuff on mm -hmm. Vine. Um, I've got Snapchat, YouTube, SoundCloud, obviously Periscope, um, and then Facebook music is um, just a bit different. It's Cartier music, so that's the only that's the only one that doesn't have the name Cartier Gleason. Right. <laughs> Still, that's uh, that's that's quite an impressive list of, of media. And is that yeah. is it hard to, to hit it all, or, or do you have it? I know some apps I have it where you can, if you hit one, it actually can post on several different other types of sites at once. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a few that are really well integrated. Um, that's why I love Periscope because it's so closely integrated with Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I I just find a way to integrate it myself. So Vine, I'll just make an announcement that I've put one up, and so people will go and check out Vine, or um, I'll say it on Snapchat, um, or people on Periscope will catch up with me on Snapchat, and then. Facebook and then my website as well. So, yeah, I just keep up with it all. And Instagram, I feel I feel like poor Instagram is just kind of taking a bit of a backseat. I got to get back on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you got to spread yourself around a little bit. Maybe you'll maybe you'll put the yeah. fire back in that too. Yeah, but it's it's cool. Like, um, and and I appreciate when everyone sort of trusts me um, on a new sort of platform. So Periscope was a, a bit of a a bit of a stretch for some of um, some of the people that I'd been talking to on Twitter for so long, um, and they're like, "All right, we'll download it for you." And I'm like, "Thank you." <laughs> and then once you do, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, you can't help but get a little bit addicted sometimes. You, you can broadcast what you're doing wherever you're doing to everybody that's on your list right then exactly, and there. Exactly, exactly. And it, and once it becomes a habit, um, you you're definitely used to it. So um, that's. That's definitely the way to do it. Um, and I think it's just great because it it helps me connect with other musicians or artists. Um, yeah, it's it's just a really great platform. Once you sort of sift past the whole bullying and the trolling and just ignore right. that. Yeah. 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 Those guys are idiots. So. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, and I feel like that that's kind of just the attitude now. People don't even give anyone the time of day that's that's trying to do that stuff. Um because yeah, yeah we're just used to it now. <laughs> a lot of other people I noticed too. Like uh, so someone said something that was offensive um, the other day uh, to you, which I can't, won't repeat here. But it was, <laughs> uh, but it was like about eight or nine people right behind them. Your fans that were on there, they were like, they were just dogging them and slamming them for like. Oh, uh, really? It was nice. It was <laughs> going yeah. defending you right there. Oh, that no, it's it's good to have. Yeah, it's good to have people back you up. Yep. Um, definitely. And, and it just, it just goes to show how much positivity there is in the world. Um, when you, when you look for it, um, it's just, it's just the negativity that seems to have a, a louder voice. They're kind of the squeaky wheel. Yeah. So you just don't give them the grease. Exactly. 
them, throw it out. Let them let them rust, right? Yeah, let them <laughs> rust. Let it rust away. So what's uh, what's in the what's in the immediate future? I, I know you have a you have your show coming up, but uh, what yep. are other things that are in the horizon for you? Um, so I've got that that show coming up. I'm still waiting to hear how Look at Us is going in Europe. Um, I know that the um, the they're kind of like an independent label that sort of picked it up to send it out on radio over there. They're looking to um, take it a little bit further around Europe. So that's very exciting. Very. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful that they're doing that. Um, yeah, just uh, continuously writing music um, and, yeah, making good tracks and talking to people. Um, I think that that's, yeah. The, the connection is is the biggest thing for me, right. and I, that, that's why I love um, Periscope so much because then I can connect with I can connect with them all the time. <laughs> that's and that's great, and and that you're willing to uh, kind of let them kind of get a little glimpse into your life and, yeah. uh, and be their friend. I think it's it's really break great. Down, break down that wall. It's it's definitely not all glitz and glamour and um, and what people perceive things as. And and I'm definitely not afraid to, to show myself unphotoshopped and I don't use auto tune anyway. So <laughs> there you go. Well, your voice is amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Your personality is, is, is great. And, uh, we have thoroughly enjoyed having you on our podcast today and we really humbly uh, appreciate the fact that, uh, that you came on and spoke to us. Oh, I'm on it. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you are welcome. And we are going to keep a close eye on your career and uh, keep following you and keep promoting you. And um, hopefully um, in the future uh, you get that record deal and a few other things come into place. Uh, you'll get um, your management will get in touch with us again and we'll have you back on to talk oh, about what, to. As, as things keep growing for you. Yeah, definitely. Ne hopefully next time I'll actually be able to like come out and see you. That would be fantastic. It would be amazing. That would be awesome. Yeah. Because we got a studio right here. So. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Katja, thank you so much. Katja Gleason, ladies and gentlemen, amazing singer. Go to our uh, website, outbreakpodcast.com, and check out uh, the links. We're going to have show notes, uh, links to everything, uh, links to her videos right there on the site. Make it easy to get in touch with her. And you need to download Periscope and you need to start following her because she is funny, uh, amazing, and an inspiration to anybody who listens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Katja, you thank fun. you so much. And thanks for listening thank to Escape Pod. Bye. <laughs> thank you for listening to Escape Pod. If you enjoyed our podcast, please go to iTunes and rate this episode. If you would like to be a part of future podcasts, email us at albraypodcast at gmail.com. Have you heard about Audible.com? For you, the listeners of Escape Pod, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I use Audible all the time and listen to some great audiobooks when I'm at work. One of the new ones I just got was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Another one I listen to is Game of Thrones by George R.R. R. Martin. But there are lots of great audiobooks out there to choose from. Over 150,000 titles available to you right now. I also listened to Paul Stanley's new autobiography called Face the Music, A Life Exposed, as read by Paul Stanley. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com backslash outbreak. Again, that's audibletrial.com backslash outbreak for your free audiobook. Support this podcast by signing up today. Please put your hands up.